Welcome back to another Pencil 2D tutorial. In this video, we'll be importing audio and images to animate in Pencil 2D. So I'll include the link in the description of this video. You can download these for free from Pixabay. We appreciate the users for uploading and sharing this artwork. I've already downloaded these and they're in my downloads directory. So I'm going to select the bitmap layer. And first I'm just gonna change this and call it background. And then I'm, while it's selected, I'm gonna go file, import, and import image. And I can just navigate to that location where I downloaded it, which is my downloads directory. And I can find this file. My file system shows me a, a preview of it when I click on it. So I'll find the right file and click open. And that brings it in, but you notice it's much larger than the field of view right now. So using the selection tool, I'll select all the artwork. Um, now I'll get exactly where I want it. And then I'll grab the move tool, which also lets me resize by left clicking and holding. And I can just resize this. If I hold the shift key on the keyboard, it'll resize uniformly so it won't get distorted. And I can just left click and hold in the middle to move this and get it right to the center of, of the, uh, the field of view of the camera here. I can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel on my mouse. And that looks pretty good there. So the next thing I need to do is add another layer. So I'll do this plus sign and go new bitmap layer. We'll call this car. And it's important to import the car on its own layer. So we select the new car layer and go to file, import image. And now I'll import the image of the car. If it's on the same layer as the background, it won't work. We won't be able to make it move independently from the background. We select this and click open. And now we see this is also too large. So we can grab the selection tool and make sure we're on the correct layer and we'll just select everything, but it's only gonna select the car because we're on the car layer, which means we can resize and move the car without moving the background houses and street. And we'll be able to animate and move this car from frame to frame as well, uh, keeping the background um, static and stationary. So we're gonna kind of create this look. I'm just dragging it across the screen right now, but we're gonna create this look here. And to do that, first we're gonna put it all the way off the screen to the right here. And notice we're on frame three. When we imported, it added a new frame on the current layer. And so I'm gonna go back, delete those frames, and we'll go back to just frame one, and then we'll advance to the next frame, and we'll just wanna move this car forward a little bit by that point in time. What I sometimes like to do is go to about the end of my animation, which I'll do here at frame 48. I'll select the thing we're animating, the car here, and I move it to a position I want it to be by frame 48. And then we'll go back to the frame that we're working on, back to frame two, and, uh, Oh, let me get back here. I recorded this video earlier, so I'm just doing the voiceover now. So I'm trying to remember what I did. We select the whole thing, and then, uh, so I went to File, Copy, and then I went to the next frame, and then I pasted that. So I'd, I'd add a frame, and then do Control V on my keyboard to paste this car. But then I started just selecting it, and I turned Onion Skin on so I could see what was happening in the last part, and that sort of created that this look here of this animation. Um, but jumping forward um, several frames later, I just kept doing this process where I would select the car, move it a little bit, and then hit the enter key to solidify that transformation, add a new frame, select the whole car, and then get into the move tool and move it forward, and then hit enter to confirm that change. On and on and on until I had the whole animation done. So you can either just move it, because when you create a new frame, it'll create the car in that same location. So this is what the animation looks like, uh, sped up. It's only going through, se uh, what's this, uh, I think it's 17 frames. The next thing I wanted to do was click on the camera layer and zoom in. So I, I went to frame one and kind of zoom in at that point. And so what I did is I added a keyframe on the camera layer at this frame 17. And there's also by default a keyframe on the camera layer at uh, frame one. So that created this sort of effect. I zoomed in on frame 17 and then left it at default on frame one. But then I went back to frame one and zoomed in on that one as well. So I'm just using the scroll wheel on the camera layer just to zoom in here. We're not affecting the anything else. We're not moving anything. We're just moving what the camera can see at frame one and at frame 17. And that'll create sort of this keyframe and animate in between, or at least move the camera view in between. So it looks like it's moving forward with the car. The last thing I wanna do is bring in a, a sound file for this. And so a good place to find sound is at freesound.org. 
Um, I'll include the link in the description of this video. It's just a collection of a bunch of free sounds you can download, and the licensing is very clear for what you can and can't use it for. So we can just click play and listen to how some of these sound. I found one I liked here. You can play it and see what it sounds like. Um, you have to be logged in to download, which I'm already logged in here. You can read all about the file and how you can use it. Just go ahead and click download if you want to download a, an audio file from here. You can also just make your own sound or record your own sound. We're going to go to add a new layer and we're going to add a sound layer. And we can just keep it called sound layer. But with that layer selected, it's going to behave just like we did with the bitmap layers and the camera layer. Um, I'll move it around. I like to have it on the bottom, but it doesn't really matter. But when the sound layer is selected, we go back to frame one and go to file, import, and then we import sound. And that brings up the Windows Office off the screen now, but I'm selecting the sound and just clicking OK, and that brings in this sound. And it looks like this sounds about 50 frames, so it's longer than my animation. And so it'll keep playing there. And so what I can do is just change the range. I can check this box to only do a range, and I can make the range be only 17 frames long. So it just starts playing the audio, uh, which isn't super ideal. But let's go ahead and uh, we'll just export this just so we can see. I'll export it as a movie. Um, I'm set up for WebM right now, so I'll just leave everything like it is here. If you want to change the location or the file extension, you can just type it in here. You can choose the location to save it, the name of the file, and then the extension. You can change to .webm or AVI or MP4. Um, I'm just doing this one in .webm because that's what I did what I had it set up for. Click OK, and that exports the video. And then we can just open and play this video and see what it looks like. I'll open it with VLC Media Player. It just plays it once and then stops. It's kind of a short video, so loopback wasn't working very well. But that's what the video looks like. Hopefully you guys found this informative, um, importing artwork, and uh, you notice we didn't do any drawing at all in this. We just imported two different piece, two different images and an audio file, and we created a very basic animation. So you don't have to be an artist. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and we'll catch you in the next video.